Keegan, and today I want to talk to you about llama body language. So llamas obviously can't speak any human language, and so in order for us to know what they are trying to communicate with us and with other llamas, we have to watch them and watch for their body language to see what they're trying to communicate. One thing that can really help in trying to understand what a llama is thinking is knowing that they are prey animals. In the wild, llamas are constantly on watch for predators that might try to eat them or their young. Llamas are also extremely social animals that live in groups together. That is where they feel safest and most comfortable. In the wild, you would have a group of llamas, either a bunch of females with their offspring guarded by a single male who mates with them, or you would have a group of males, uh, often called a bachelor herd, uh, that live together. And then when it comes to mating season, that's when they all kind of have it out at one another, decide who is going to mate with all the females, and then they gather back up together again in a bachelor herd. Due to their social nature, llamas are often communicating with one another as well as with humans. And this is actually a plus for us because this allows for us to see what exactly is going on in a llama's mind when they are trying to communicate with one another as well as when they're communicating with us. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey, Axel. Thanks for joining us. Yes. A basic concept for llama body language is understanding what they are paying attention to at a given time. Llamas will point their heads and the fronts of their body towards what they are paying attention to, which can seem kind of basic, but basically it means that um, a llama that is pointing its butt towards you or moves its hindquarters towards you, turning around, is uncomfortable with you and trying to kind of get you away from it. They will also point their ears in the direction of things that they are paying attention to. When they're pointed forward, it tends to be they're looking at what's in front of them. They can also point them kind of behind themselves. In this case, you can see he pointed his ears momentarily back in this direction because he could hear that Wyatt, or Reeves, he could hear that Reeves was coming around the corner. And then he immediately pinned back his ears and turned his head over there to look at him and warn him, hey, don't come close, this is my food. Here is an example, first of all, of some happy, relaxed llamas. These llamas feel that they are safe uh, because they are spending their time grazing and um, they're not looking up, looking around. Especially with Tango, we see that his tail is nice and relaxed. It might lift up a little bit, as well as axles, but they're not lifted up super high or lifted back onto their backs. Their ears are nice and relaxed, and they're just walking around, ambling about. Here we have an inquisitive llama. They prick their ears forward, look where they want to go, and they lift up their tails a little bit. This is Axel being inquisitive and curious. He wants to go over there, but he knows he can't get over that fence. So he's gonna have to figure out how to get around. <laughs> there is an opening for him. He's just taking a moment to figure it out. <sighs> Silly llama. Good boy. It's a good boy, not testing it. Yeah, come over here. An angry or defensive llama will pin their ears and lift up their chins towards the sky and then glare at the threat. In this case, he's not glaring at me, he's glaring over at the other llamas nearby because he's trying to protect all the food resources for himself. When they lift their chins up in the sky and open their mouths, they're also threatening that they might spit soon. Here you can see Angel is telling Wyatt that he doesn't want him to come close to his food. So I don't necessarily want to stress my llamas out just to show you what a stressed llama looks like. So I'm just going to describe it for you. Um, it looks very similar to this 
um, a defensive llama in that often their ears will be kind of pinned back. Their head will be either in this neutral position or their chins will be raised up. But often when they're stressed, their facial muscles get tensed a lot more. So in this case, you can kind of see that there's like a, a rounded area under his eye. You can see near the back of his eye, there's kind of a wrinkle. But if he were very stressed, you'd see a very pronounced wrinkle underneath his eye, his bottom eyelid. And then his um, lower lip would be very tensed up. Stressed llamas will also flick their tails a lot, swish their tails. Um, they can stamp or, or dance around their feet. And a stressed llama basically wants to get out of the situation. So often they will try to run away. Another stance that llamas can take on in order to communicate with others is a um, submissive stance. Um, this is something that I have seen Axel and Tango here do because they are younger than the rest of the herd. Sometimes if one of the bigger llamas is acting um, aggressive, he, if he is pinning back his ears, lifting up his head very high, what Tango and Axel will do is that they'll lift their tails up. And let's see if I can kind of gently move his tail. They don't really like their tails being messed with, so he's tucking it. But they will move their tails and flip them back. I'm going to put my hand like it's a tail. It's like imagine it flips back onto his back. So they flip their tails back and they lower their heads down and they make a little mm, sound. And that's just kind of showing, oh, I'm submissive. I'm young. Please don't pick on me. I'm no threat to you. This here is the position that llamas stand in when they're going to the bathroom, when they're peeing or pooping. Though when they're pooping, they usually lift up their tails. If a llama is standing like this, but they aren't going to the bathroom, then this could possibly mean that they're in pain or that they're trying to go to the bathroom, but they can't pass something. And generally it means that something is wrong. So you wanna check that out or have a vet check it out. Often when a llama lies down, they do something that is called cushing. It's where they tuck their legs underneath their bodies, kind of like a cat. Um, often when they do this, they ju are just resting. Um, they do this when they're sleeping. Sometimes they have their heads up to look around. Sometimes they lay their heads down on the ground. If a llama is cushed like this and you can't get them up, um, then that could show that they are in pain or having some issues, especially if they're having um, gastrointestinal issues. So you don't want a llama to be lying down for a very long time. Um, it also can cut off the circulation in their legs. However, this is a totally normal position for them to be <laughs> lying down in. That was very cute, Angel. <laughs> Angel here likes to lie down while he eats. Um, you know, the peak lazy llama. A final tip is that despite being highly social animals, llamas don't really like to be touched and they like their own personal space. In this case, these guys are very comfortable with one another or they're very hungry <laughs> because they're being rather close to one another in order to eat. In this case, it's because of all the food and also they, they know one another. So they trust each other to a relative point. However, this means that llamas don't naturally like to be touched very much by humans. And it takes time to work up to that trust. Here we have a llama who's relatively comfortable with being touched. This is Axel, um, and because he's been handled by humans for a good portion of his life, he's relatively comfortable with me touching him, stroking him along his neck area. He would be much more uncomfortable if I was touching his butt because llamas do not naturally like their butts being touched. That is where they target if they are fighting one another. In this case, he's looking over at the other llamas. Um, so I know he's not upset at me. I'm looking at the context in this case. If I were alone and he was making this face, I would know that he did not want me to be touching him. However, he is standing here as I'm touching him. 
And generally, if a llama doesn't want you to be touching them, they'll walk away. So he's okay with it. Good boy. <laughs> now he's showing off his food. Yeah, is that tasty? That's tasty. My final point to make when you're trying to read a llama's body language is to try and look at the context of the situation. Are the llamas in a group? How long have they known each other? How long have they known you? If I were to walk up to Angel right now, I can see that his ears are kind of back. He's kind of got a mad face on, yeah. However, I know, I know that um, there are other llamas around and he is being protective of his food. He's not showing aggression towards me. But this is because one, I know him and two, I'm in this situation. If he were a strange llama that I didn't know before and there weren't other llamas around and I approached him like this and he had his ears pinned and he was lying down like this, I might think that either he could be in pain or that he wants me to go away and he doesn't want me to be around. He might see me as another llama rather than a human and he might be guarding his food, which is a bit of a red flag for llamas to see humans as other llamas. However, if he's like this, where his ears are kind of relaxed, he's chewing, he's hanging out, I can walk up to him, pet him. Good boy, now he's painting his ears again, but that's because Angel's right here, or Axel's right there. But if I was in a situation where I was meeting him for the first time and here his ears are, are up, he's letting me pet him. I know that he's a pretty friendly guy. Okay, thank you for joining me and I hope this video was helpful in helping you read llama body language.